Hey, good morning everyone. Um, today is September 10th. Um, exactly two months since uh, David, my husband, passed away. Currently here at the scene of the accident. Um, I, I wanted to start making these videos. I wanted to start the first month, but I wouldn't have been able to keep it together. I barely feel like I can keep, I can keep it together now when I'm reminded of everything that happened. Um, but uh, I came out here, I just, I don't know. I don't know exactly what for. Um, I mean, this was the place where he did speak his last uh, few words, wife, love her. And uh, I can still see like, <clears throat> Like, there's still parts of his car, like the vehicle, and like the aftermath of the crash. So, I don't know. Um, I, I try not to be reminded of like the actual tragedy that happened, but it's just inevitable. Um, the reason for like this video or like these little vlogs are for my own personal, like, I guess, like, not benefit, but. I want to see like as time progresses like how my progress has like gone forward so I mean the first month like I said I just didn't have what it t like what it took to, to make a video and this second month um <clears throat> I figured I could hop on here and make one of these i'm not even sure if i'm gonna post it to be honest like <laughs> i'm sitting here thinking like diana are you just talking to yourself or are you just gonna keep it on your phone are you gonna post it on your blog which i might just uh, upload it on youtube and post post it on my blog but um i wanted to just like just talk about like what happened because i know i had a lot of people ask me and everyone knows like obviously he was involved in a car accident but no one really knows the details and how all that happened so i mean this shouldn't be a long video at all but um <clears throat> let me move this thing yeah it was uh, august 9th here we go let me see there we go it was august 9th and um he was supposed to go get the boys after work because um Shadell and i had a meeting and uh turns out the woman I was supposed to be uh, meeting up with she uh, canceled last minute um, unfortunately you know when I called David to let him know that it was too late um, so he was on his way home from work well to my mom's house from work on State Road State Road 40 and it was kind of rainy that that evening he had actually called me he called me right after he got off work and I was getting ready so I did not answer um we had been texting all day prior to that though we had even gotten in a little argument when I dropped off the boys at my mom's um because he didn't want me to be home too late he said he had to go out and uber so he's like don't be home late and he started getting an attitude and the good thing is after we got we got off the phone um he texted me and he said, you know, he was sorry and he loved me. And I said, I love you too. And that was the last time we said, I love you to each other. Um, so anyway, on his way to my mom's, another vehicle crossed over the center line and went into his lane. So naturally, I guess what David did, there's a guardrail on both sides. Oh gosh. <laughs> Okay, so what he did was that he swerved over to the other lane to avoid the head-on collision. But, you know, this is all going on in a matter of seconds. The man that went into his lane decided to go back into his proper lane of travel. So, as that happened, like, both, like, they just both, like, collided into each other. And, um, David spun around several times. And he received the higher impact, the worse impact, worser impact, um, and ended up against the guardrail. And his vehicle was completely destroyed. It was completely destroyed, just totaled. Um, 
a woman she reached out to me she didn't necessarily see the accident thank goodness for witnesses though because they were trying to blame david um when all david was trying to do was just avoid the collision in the first place uh, so this woman she saw david hit the guardrail parked her car in the middle of the road ran out she said she saw the other guy was okay he got out and then there was david um she said he was unconscious for the most part going in and out and uh just moaning you know and she was trying to ask him a question because she saw there was a car seat in the back she wanted to make sure there were no babies in the car but he couldn't pull through like he couldn't answer her and she said she just made sure to let him know that he wasn't alone people started coming up and they were saying all kinds of horrible things like he's not gonna make it so she told them all you know to just like go away because he could obviously still hear um so uh she said like right before the ambulance came uh he was able to pull through and just say uh wife love her and then after that you know that was it he was transported to a hospital not really nearby it's a hospital about maybe 40 minutes from where the accident happened he was transported via air care so the helicopter he got onto the uh, ambulance and then they rode like they drove up a little bit so the helicopter could land and pick him up and take him because I mean his injuries were pretty traumatic it was pretty ca uh, catastrophic as the medical team told me um as far as like the outside went like everything looked good you know he looked great I really thought he was going to be able to pull through it was just that everything was um was internal uh well I found out because I uh you know I found out about all this because I uh I knew there was something wrong um whenever he didn't answer that first phone call like right then like I just knew something was off because he usually does answer um or at least to tell me if he's on the other line or something and he keeps a, a charger at his desk in his office so I know his phone's like never dead you know so I kept texting him I kept texting and calling and I was so upset I was so worried like I just had this feeling something horrible had happened to my husband and um you know it's crazy as uh, I met up with Shadel, um I was I was uh I told her I was like let's just go and meet up at the cafe at the coffee shop and we'll just chill there and I'll wait for David to get home um so anyway on my way there like as I was calling and calling I I knew something was wrong and when I passed that hospital where he was being transported to me at that time not knowing um I passed that hospital I started bawling I started crying my eyes out and I was like oh my gosh like my husband is dead like he's he's not with me anymore and I was like crying so bad and at the same time I'm thinking like Diana like you're being ridiculous why are you just assuming the worst like he's probably okay like you know but something in me just knew it, it was it was wild it was so crazy and then I got to the coffee shop <laughs> As soon as Shadell walked in, she saw me like I was crying again and I told her how uneasy I was feeling and naturally, you know, as a good friend, she's trying to like uplift me and um, be optimistic and positive and say, hey, like, listen, his phone probably went dead or something happened with the vehicle, like he's fine. And I try to make myself believe that, but um, I don't know, I just, I knew he wasn't. So on the iPhone, you can actually check like nearby accidents and like on the GPS app so um that's what i did i checked for nearby accidents uh i checked that road state road 40 because i knew that's the only road he had to go through to get to my mom's and there was a little accident icon i clicked it and it said that the accident was reported at 5 30. that's approximately 30 minutes after he got off work and uh from his job to that specific location right there is about 25 30 minutes so then i worry more and shadell tells me like oh that makes sense there's still you know delay the, the traffic is delayed his phone's you know that his phone went, went dead and that's what happened 
and I was like you know what I'm gonna call the police department because I need to find out for myself like I need to make sure like he wasn't involved so I walk outside call the police department they tell me to call Florida Highway Patrol because they're the ones that um they handle all accidents like out here on state roads and stuff so I call them give them David's name no match dispatch comes back on the phone and asks for the model and make of the vehicle so I do that he clicks back over and he says ma'am he hesitates a little bit that's when I knew um he said you know that is a match for one of the parties involved in the accident At that moment, I just felt my whole life like, shattering, deteriorating, everything. I was trying my hardest not to scream, so I had my hands over my mouth, and Chanel, like, ran out. I told her what happened, and um, she quickly took me to the hospital where he was at, and um, I got there, and it just went downhill after that everyone kept telling me you know like he's gonna make it he's gonna make it and a part of me really did believe it because he's such a strong man such a strong man like I said physically wise he was intact everything looked good he was he was okay so I really wanted to believe that I made myself believe it but like on a spiritual level like I don't know like I just I knew he was gone I knew that he wouldn't he wouldn't come back um uh, they told me several hours later um, after they allowed the medicine to do what it had to do they said that uh, there was just so much swelling in the brain that it caused uh, brain death because it was just getting so inflamed and it was starting to move things around in there and like the brain stem was pushing down on the spine so even if there would have been some blood circulation like my husband wouldn't have been my husband he would have been permanently like impaired regardless so either way it went he was gone you know so uh yeah that first those first few days that first week is kind of a blur to me right now like i've had people tell me like yeah like this happened and you were like that and this you said this and like it's it's such a blur definitely the worst days of my life um you know, and now people ask how I'm doing, and oh, my nails are looking so crazy. I'm actually about to go get my nails done. Um, they ask how I'm doing, and you know, it comes in waves. Like everyone says, some days I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I'm good. Like he's with me. I know I'm gonna see him again. Like it's all good. Like I'm gonna move forward. Like I'm starting to feel, you know, like happiness in some ways, and then other days I'm just like a hot mess and like. I scream out for him and I cry and I break down so uh, I'm already a very emotional person and now this is like you know just throws me off sometimes but yeah I just wanted to share you know like what happened and how all that like went down and how I knew like oh my goodness my intuition is like a one like it's on point like I knew I knew before I even had any idea what really happened <sighs> but yeah I'm gonna sit here and contemplate whether I'm gonna post this or not if not and I'm just gonna keep it in my phone I don't know he would probably want me to post it he knew I love sharing you know raw um, things about like my journey about my life so yeah I uh, thank you for watching if you watched all of this and I just want to say thank you to all those who have been showing like their continuous support and love and keeping me in their thoughts and prayers and all it's it's really great you know to feel love from so many people that I haven't even met personally um but yeah I will probably be making another one of these next month just to track my progress and see how I'm doing um all right guys well thanks for watching bye